Father Peter is one of a kind. He has spent over 50 years in Kenya, in our country. Actually, his desire was to, to, to die here and be buried in this country. So that's special for him. Actually, he's more Kenyan than some of us. Uh, and he said that many times. The most special to me is the prisons activities we've done over the years. Uh, when Father Peter went to the prisons in 1999, that was when prisons were closed completely. And when he went, he endeared himself to the prison officer that, that time, and he was allowed to come in, in a very small way, to bring newspapers to inmates, because they never had any newspapers, just to sort of have an, a contact with the outside world. That is very special, because nobody at that point, even though they could go to a prison, and do something like that. My name is uh, Sergeant John Fred Kanza. I work at uh, Nairobi Remand Location Prison. And uh, eulogizing Father Peter is kind of hard for me because I knew him personally and I've worked with him. It's been a, a, a journey that uh, I've seen him do a lot for this institution. For school, he did the extension of the library, the computer lab, he did counseling rooms. Um, for the hospital, he did the sheds and the benches where he made sit and wait to, be, uh, to see the doctor. Uh, he also did uh, tanks for every block so that inmates can be able to get water and access to clean water for that. And uh, during COVID, uh, his organization was able to donate uh, sewing machines for us to be able to sew uh, clothes that were torn for the inmates and also do masks that could be used for the inmates during that period. And also to assist with the cleanliness, uh, he did a couple of walls, painting them and also doing uh, some, some nice drawings that have uh, meaning. When I look at uh, what he has done, you can say most of it is to do with human rights and the welfare of the inmates, be they uh, remandees or those who are uh, serving term sentences. Things like windows would really matter to him because that affects the health of the inmates. Things like water, hygiene, these, these were the things that uh, really Father Peter was uh, very passionate about. The food. When he goes there on Sundays, he would carry milk. And uh, on Christmas Day, he would buy milk and bread. And that is what we still do, even at the foundation, we carry on with, the, with that work. He also would carry old newspapers so that the inmates could get informed of what's happening outside. And uh, the television sets, he provided television sets so that the inmates could do away with boredom. Nairobi Remand is the biggest uh, remand institution in the country. So that was special to Father Peter as well. Counseling services were very crucial there because you can imagine you're in remand, you don't know when you'll, your case will be completed. Remands in this country ideally are not supposed to participate in programs of rehabilitation. So they spend all the day behind in a cell. So there's a lot of stress. So counseling rooms were provided in that particular prison, including other institutions, because the mental, the mental capacity of inmates is extremely, extremely stressful. So counseling was also crucial to Father Peter. And even the staff that are with inmates, inmates the whole day, Father Peter thought about them a lot because they are also behind the bus in some extent because they are with the inmates the whole day, especially the junior officers. So Father Peter was very, very keen on supporting those officers to be better agents of change. So he started a training program for officers, which is over 10 years old now, and supported over 6,000 staff in the prisons, just to be able to address their psychosocial issues, to be able to help the inmates who are behind the bus. We have had an easy time uh, doing counseling for inmates. Since previously we didn't have counseling rooms, until when Faraja came in, and also the school uh, now has a library 
It also has a, a staff room for the teachers to use and also a computer lab, meaning that inmates and staff are able to uh, learn computers and also get certification for the same. And we are also able to uh, take inmates through formal education. They sit for their KCP exams here and also they prepare for that in the libraries. And uh, that is something that previously could not be done. And you see when inmates are busy doing something with themselves, it becomes easy. It becomes easy for us to be able to deal with them. And uh, especially from the welfare section, I think it has really impacted a lot for us. When inmates are uh, sitting under a shade to wait to see the doctor, it becomes easy. Thank you.